are showing is that we are taking a lot of time in the decision making in the early stages, okay, <coughs> but not necessarily reaching any better benefit. There was something fundamentally wrong within the organization, and that led to a lot of improvement, the system improvement in the organization. How can we improve our system that in order to shorten our project span, but we cannot just look between gate five and six, we have to look at the whole thing. So from this perspective, we are saying we need to plan. Now some concept will tell you who cares about planning, execute and you learn as you go. No, that's fine, if that's an acceptable approach, if the organization is mature enough to accept the mistake that will be done along the way, maybe this is an acceptable approach. So far, I haven't been able to see that works. But again, that's an opinion. The project would not have been done, would have not have been done or started if the truth had been told about cost and time scale. Now, the person who said this, exactly I don't know who, but somebody said something very similar to this back in 1962, which is a Boeing CEO, okay? I, don't, I couldn't find the exact quotation, but basically it's part of the NASA, United States government, NASA, they did a, a detailed study, about 110, 120 pages, on <coughs> looking at cost and schedule performance of the military product in the US. It's public domain, by the way. It's, uh, it's interesting to see the government study, detailed study about cost, it's out of the domain, public domain, but it's an old study. And they look at, uh, basically, it's a, why we can never get a product funded or approved if we tell what do we think the real costs are. So you, what do you do? You propose something, and then you go further and further. And all of a sudden, it become big. Interestingly enough, yesterday I was flipping channel on TV. I was watching an American movie based on uh, when the Soviets were in uh, Afghanistan, about Afghanistan. And this one congressman basically want money. And initially, and I was flipping only through, you know, every once in a while I flip back. But you can see the, mo the money is coming up. You know, uh, early in the movie he was asking for 5 million. Then it becomes 10, then it becomes 30, then it becomes 70. Then it becomes 100 million. And then I stopped watching, I, I stopped flipping, so I didn't watch after to see how far actually they spent. But we all know probably when the uh, Soviet were in, in Afghanistan, uh, probably the, the rumors had it like at least 3 to 4 billion dollars from uh, the American and three to four billion dollars from other people were, in, were spent on those type of initiative as a result. Government, actually, you ask no wonder the US government is, I don't know what is the debt of in the trillions of dollars of the US government. Why? Because we are doing things like this. Okay? We under, we, what we call this, we lowball our estimate. It's not highly common everywhere, but it is a fact. So these type of things is why we need maturity. Okay? One more quotation. We know why projects fail. We know how to prevent their failure. So why do they still fail? Uh, this topic, and I said project management started back in the 40s and 50s of last year because the belief is in the US defense industry, nonetheless, and other, uh, probably Europe and other places, is that project management was started because there was a belief that management had failed in managing projects. Traditional management failed in managing projects. So I, I raise the point to ponder, and the question I ask again, and I will even, I'm not going to answer here, because I, I, I will pause it for you to think about, is has project management succeeded in solving the problem that management have identified? Basically, the same we feel management had failed years ago, we launched project management. Has project management succeeded? Obviously, when you look at quotation like this, you say, no, it hasn't. Okay? That we're still getting failed projects. Well, some people say it's failed and product management is not working. Some will say, no, actually it's working, but we are still missing things. My personal opinion, obviously product management has succeeded in many areas, but we still have a lot of failures. Why? We need to better understand, okay? Uh, some of the reason, and I basically I'm inviting people to research, and we need more research on that topic. Why do we still have failures in product? This is a study on IT project. It's highly popular, highly uh, uh, known in, the, uh, in many global markets in the area of uh, technology project uh, that shows failure rate, success and challenge and failure of IT project or ICT project. And so basically what we're looking at here, uh, succeeded project, 34%, 29%. If we look at 2009 data, 
Now, the Standish group and the chaos report is highly popular, but there are a lot of people right now you find that are questioning the validity of this report. So the, the question is how good it is. Now, the reason most of the adversity around this report is because the methodology used to determine these results is secret. And many acad academics and, the, and the researchers said, how can I trust a number if I don't know the methodology behind it? So some people think this is rubbish. Okay? Uh, some people think, well, it's questionable because we don't understand the methodology. Now, nonetheless, this is a case, whether it's rubbish or it's great, if we look at the same company standard and whatever they're using, we know this is not a huge significant change in terms of product success. Okay? Again, why? And the work we need to look for, what's missing? Okay? Uh, I can talk all day on this, but I'm just leaving a lot of open question uh, for everybody to think about. We know, we know that maturity, and we know this because a lot of research and studies and publication has been done on this, that product management, as I mentioned, have made a difference. Uh, maybe I should step back. In 86, when the first time this report was done, success rate was only 16%. So even in this report that shows that basically in about, what, 15 years or so, it, uh, success rate has doubled. Still very low. But remember, it was only 16%. So what is the difference here? We think maturity has a big impact on this, obviously, and we can show some stuff to demonstrate that. This was done, a study that one at the University of California in Berkeley, some of you probably have seen it if you've taken classes with us before, that if we go up the step of maturity, obviously we expect performance to improve. So improvement is going to the right, as we go up from step one to step five, uh, basically maturity of our organization improved. But what was interestingly found, and this is based on actual data collected from companies, is as sorry, as we reach about level three maturity, okay, the cost of managing projects start to drop big time. That's what you see here. But it continued to improve. We still see improvement in term. You notice this different, this curve is reflecting the cost of managing projects. Whereas this slide here, it reflects improvement in performance in terms of cost, schedule, stakeholder management, and across other areas. Maybe show it differently in this study that was done by a company called PM Solution. They have a center for business practice. Uh, this is about two years old study. And what it shows here, comparing level one, two, three only. Because I'm not sure of how many companies actually done four and five in product management. Okay. Uh, I haven't seen a single research that indicates a product management company that is, or a company that is level five maturity in product management, or even level four. Uh, so level three, on what we are showing here, if you look at the different factors, you can look at the bar, at the blue bar. In every single one here, the blue bar is higher which mean organizations that are level three, okay, are performing much better on any of these points, from organizational success, to shareholder satisfaction, to product aligned to strategy, to customer satisfaction, to organization, to strategy, to project and budget and time, to resource allocation. In every single one of them, level three is higher than level two and one, and level two is higher than one except in these two, it wasn't enough to measure difference, they were basically the same between level one and two. The second chart shows, if you look at the opposite of that, if you're looking at more weaknesses and problems. And again, what we're seeing here is that companies with higher level maturity have less problems across multiple topics. I apologize, the, the uh, screen is not very clear uh, on this one, but basically it again represents the same thing. What does that mean? On the good side, Organization with higher maturity perform much better, and on the negative side, they have less problem across the board. Okay, and I can show you maybe ten other studies will be the same thing. <laughs> so it has shown and proven that organizations who have higher level of maturity have better chance of success. Notice we're not saying they are highly successful, 
We're not saying the 100% performance. We're not saying even at scale of five. You know, notice there's nothing here. But what we know is they do better. So there is a need for enhancing performance in organization. And if you want to have organizational excellence in product management, we need to have a higher level of maturity. This is one model out there from uh, APM from the UK that actually put names on these levels. The different models have different names. What I want to highlight here is that maturity is not consistent because you could be better in one area versus another. For example, this model, this company is probably at level five, four in the risk management, but they are only at level two in shared stakeholder management. So within different areas within product management, one organization can do better than another. The same organization, sorry. There could be, there could be differences in performance in the area. Okay. I will leave it at that. Uh, close with this topic on maturity. Uh, higher organization are, can do product faster, cheaper, okay, at lower product management cost, plus maybe better customer satisfaction, maybe better quality, maybe better stakeholder management, there are many different benefits related to a uh, uh, higher level of maturity in product money. What are the elements? Now, okay, if we accept the concept, maybe I should break for a second there. Uh, what I've tried to do so far is maybe build a case for the need of product management maturity within an organization. Okay. Now, if you accept, at least in principle, that is an argument that is needed, that how can we build project management maturity within an organization? What are the steps we need to take in order to build the maturity, to make it sustainable over the long term? Okay, so it's not a trend to implement tomorrow and the day after we forget what it means. There are many ways, and there are many international uh, maturity models uh, that are available from organizations like PMI and like uh, APM in the UK. I've been in product managers for 25 years, and I find many of those models are too complicated. Okay? They are not for the average user. And what we are trying to do with product management, uh, the, the, the mission that Sukan <coughs> has is that product management to touch on all aspects of life. We want to make product management as available for as many people as possible, rather than focus only on those that want to highly specialize senior product manager and product management type. Okay. Obviously, we want both. Those who have a lot of sophistication, a lot of experience in product management, definitely there's PMI or PM3 model, there's a P3M3 model from APM, there's uh, uh, many other organizations have maturity model that are probably pretty good, not probably, they are pretty good, they have some weaknesses and pluses and advantages and disadvantages to implement if, you have, if your organization has reached a higher level of maturity already, or you think you have a good system uh, established. However, if we look for small, medium organization, we look at the majority of organization who doesn't want a complicated system, we think we come up with a simpler, simpler system or a simplified system 